Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making this elf slipper. Um, this is the front of the toe. There's a reason I made it curved like this instead of like it would normally be like that. First of all, I didn't want to feel it with my toe. I didn't want to feel this. And secondly, if I was to build it normally for it to do that, it would constantly look like it was over the big toe and not over the foot. So that's why I chose to build the slipper like this. Um, I absolutely love, love, love this slipper. This will fit between a seven and an eight. This foot model is a 7.5 US. These sizes are in US. So um, I'm using a four millimeter for this project. So if you need it bigger, then I would change hook size. If you need it smaller, then I would change hook size. But at the same time, as we're going to build, you're going to have to put it on your foot to see where to stop this part to start the heel. You're going to have, if it's for you, you're going to have to try it on. If it's for somebody else, you're probably going to have to take foot me measurements. There's going to be a chart that I will put in the video for you to reference the size that you need for um, adult feet to different sizes. So, the yarn I'm going to be using is now, of course, I, I have the, the labels. I write everything down anyway, but I use a Craft Smart Value, Super Value. Craft Smart, sorry, Super. I don't know where I got Super from. So, this is a Craft Smart Value. The color is Tomato. That's the red I'm going to use. This is a Craft Smart Value. So, same, same label as I just showed you, and this is called Ivy. That's the color, Ivy. So that's what I'm going to be using for the heel and for the little frills around the ankle. And I didn't put anything here because you need it to pull on, right? So that's why nothing is up here. But if you want to keep doing your frills all the way up, the reason I didn't was because you are going to need something to pull on. And you know, that's just not conducive. So let's jump right into this. Yes, and I should add to the jingle bell on the end of the toe. Are these guys that I got from Michaels and um, they're 18 millimeter jingle bells. You can get all different sizes. I've got bigger jingle bells here from Michaels. And these are 30 millimeters, but you can get all different sizes. So the ones I use for this are 18 millimeters. All my yarn is four weight. So you're going to make a magic ring. I'm going to start this off with single crochets. I'm going to be jumping back and forth from half double to singles to half double and singles. This magic ring, I want you to put seven single crochets into the center. The reason I did seven is because I want it to be six single crochets, but I'm going to be slip stitching and chaining and I want to use a whole stitch for that. So that's why seven. So this first stitch I want you to go into, I want you to make a slip stitch and I want you to chain one.
for the next three rows I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. That's my three rows. For the next two rows, I want you to do three single crochets and three half double crochets. This is what's going to turn that part. Slip stitch, chain one. So this row is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That was my one single crochet and two single crochets in the next stitch for the increase and repeat. One single crochet, two single crochets all the way around. So three times gets her done. You're going to go into, I split my yarn there. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and then four half doubles. That's five single crochets and then four half doubles. Slip stitch, chain one. You're going to start seeing the turn. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. Slip stitch, chain one. For the next five rows, you're going to do six single crochets and six half double crochets. So that's my five rows of the six single crochet, six half double crochet. Um, this is my seam. I just want you to understand putting that extra stitch in there will alleviate the look of that seam. I hate seams, so I, most of my projects are in amigurumi. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So your first stitch will go into that chain one space. Three single crochets and an increase of two single crochets in the same space. Slip stitch, chain one. Oh, I don't need that anymore. I'm still counting rows for some reason. So we're gonna do an increase on this next row bringing you up to 18 stitches. Right now you have 15. We're at the next row is going to be two different stitches used during an increase. So
First I want you to do four single crochet. So the first stitch goes not chain one space. That's my four single crochets. The next stitch gets two single crochets in the same space. That's your increase. The next stitch, the next four stitches gets one in each. So four single crochets. Now this will be an increase using half double crochet. So two half double crochets in this next stitch, same space. Anything you see written with brackets means the same space. Next, four half double crochets. And your last stitch will have two half double crochets in the same space. Slip stitch. Chain one. So we did an increase while still making it curve. And that was the whole point of that. We're going to do the same thing for the next round. We're going to do five single crochets. Oops. Make sure I'm going into the right space. Chain one space. That's my five single crochets. My next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. Then I'm going to do five single crochets. And then I'm going to do two half double crochets in the next space for the increase. And then I'm going to do five half double crochets. And your last stitch gets two half doubles for the increase. And yes, I realized that you're, you're way up here and your slip stitch is way down here. I do get that. It's um, just the way the cookie crumbles. You should have 21 stitches. So your next round is going to be 10 single crochets and 11 half doubles. Your next round is going to be a weird one. You're going to do six single crochets. That's my six single crochets. Then you're going to do two single crochets in the same space for the increase. Then you're going to do six single crochets. Then you're going to do two half doubles for the increase in the same space. Then you're going to do six half doubles. That's my six half doubles. And then two half doubles in the same space. For the increase, slip stitch, chain one. So we should have this 
funny looking thing here. Your next round is going to be seven single crochets. That's my seven. Then you're going to do two single crochets for the increase in the next stitch. Then you're going to do seven single crochets. Then you're going to do two half double crochets for the increase. Then you're going to do seven half double crochets. And that's seven. And then two half double crochets in the last stitch for the increase. Chain one, slip stitch and chain one. So this is looking pretty funny. Um, the reason I chose to do it like this is because this has a natural curve to it where all the other slippers, it's a forced curve. I wanted a natural curve, so you didn't, you weren't constantly fighting with it. It wasn't constantly flopping down. You know, I wanted a natural curve. And that is why I chose to do it like this. So your next round is going to be 13 single crochets and 14 half doubles. So this is what you should have at this point and your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. So this should um, really make it curve around. You should have 27 stitches. So the seam is very minimal. It is difficult to find because you're putting that one stitch into this, the chain one space. So you cut down on how much seam shows through. So now we're just going to do a regular old, now we're just doing the slipper part. We're already done our little curvature toe part. We're going to do eight, sing, eight half double increase. So we're going to chain two and you're going to put a half double into that chain two space. That'll count as number one. So eight half doubles. And then two half doubles in the same space for the increase and repeat. Your next round is going to be nine half doubles and an increase. I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to chain two. Your next round is going to be ten half doubles and an increase. Your 
Your next round is going to be 11 single crochets and an increase. So I'm back around again and I'm going to go into that space, slip stitch and chain two. So as you can see, the um, seam is almost non-existent. That's what you want. You want a nice clean, no seam seam. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. So from here, the next eight rows I want you to just to put one half double crochet into each stitch so this is where you're going to you know put it on your foot or measure it if you're making it for somebody else and um, see if you need the eight rows or not if you're making this for a seven and a half to eight foot then, and you're using the same yarn or same hook, then the eight rows should be fine. So, I'm going to let you go. I will put my shoe chart up there so you know how big to make this. And I'm going to do my eight rows, and I will see you on the other side. So this is your eight rows and this is where it should be. So we're going to do a few more rows before we start the heel. So if you need to, to um, put it on your foot and measure it, um, this is supposed to be over like that. This is your seam. So it, that's where it should be on your foot right now. We're going to do 11 half doubles and um, a decrease. That's 11 half doubles and then a decrease. You can use the front loops only or the whole stitch, doesn't matter. Either way, you do it the same. So using the front loops only will make it an invisible one, which not really, it's not really invisible. It just leaves smaller holes. I'm going to use the invisible one because I really don't want to see it. It's right on the top of your foot, number one. So yarn over, go into your first stitch. Pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, go into your next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through three. That is how you do a decrease with a half double. And repeat. So for the next three rows, you're going to put, well you should have 36 stitches, so you're going to put one half double in each of those 36 stitches. And I will see you on the other side.
So this is what you should have at this point. Um, this is my seam, so it's kind of wandering a little bit, but it's still kind of staying along the side of the foot. Well, it's kind of moving. Mine's wandering. I hate when that happens, but this is where it should be. So it should be right up. That's about how much you should have exposed. We're going to start the heel next. So we have to switch to a green color to do our heel, but because I have a wandering, um, let's put it the way it's actually. So this is the way it's supposed to be laying, like that. Mine is not over on the side because it wandered, as you can see. So to remedy that, <laughs> I need to just do some slip stitches over to where I need it to be. So I'm going to do four and I think that's good. And I'm going to bring in my green. And I'm going to chain one. So I still got my red here. I'm going to tie this green and red in a double knot for my color change. And we are going to be going back to the red, but uh, you can cut that off. Gotta get sharp scissors, I'm telling you. So, before we start, you're probably gonna wanna do something with these. So, I would suggest not really cutting them off because you would, um, you would, uh, risk the knot opening up that you just made. So I would just do a quick weave. But you can change color however you want. You don't need to do it like I do it. Just less hassle. Way less hassle for me. So you're going to chain one. Oh, I already did that. So you're going to turn your work and I need to start making the heel right about here. So we're going to do 15 half double crochets. So this is my 15th stitch. So that's what it should look like. It should be exactly right in the center. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. So let's turn it this way. You're going to half double decrease 
So go into your stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull through two, pull through three. And now you can do 11 half doubles to the other side and then do the same thing. Decrease the two on the end. That's 11. So it only looks like you got one stitch here, but you got this turning over stitch. So you're just going to have to make sure you get into both pieces. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to do again a decrease, you're going to do nine half doubles. That's nine half doubles and then your decrease. Chain one, turn your work. So the reason I'm only chaining one and turning, even though I'm using half doubles, is because I'm not using that as a stitch. That's just a turning chain. And we do again. Decrease the first two stitches, do seven half doubles. That's my seventh half double, and I'm going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to decrease the first two. You're going to do five half doubles. That's my fifth half double, and I'm going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. I want you to decrease the first two. I want you to do three half doubles. And I want you to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. So I want you to do five, oops, sorry, I want you to do five single crochets.
chain one turn your work and we are going to change to red so let's change the red to red over here on our last stitch chain one turn your work so I'm going to take my green I can weave this in your next round actually for two rows you're going to do two half double crochet decreases So that's two. That looks funny because I took all the things with it, but you'll never notice it. That's two half doubles and then your decrease. So that should just be right on the very top. Down the side, you're going to have to create stitches. So just try to put them in evenly somewhere. So two half double cro crochet decreases all the way around. So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like. Your your heel-ish part should be right right on the bottom. Um, if you have, I don't know what you did here for how many stitches, but if you have 32 or a little bit less, then it's probably going to fit really good on your foot. Maybe with a little bit of extra room if you're at 32. Um, but I don't know what what stitches you have. I don't know the size of your leg. I don't know what you need. So that's all going to be again up to you. Um, my last slipper, this one here, um, is 32 around here, but I got a chunky ankle and I have a fat leg. So I had to kind of keep it big for that reason. So if you don't have a chunky ankle like me, mine are always swollen. So I have that problem. So this next round is just going to be one half double in each stitch all the way around. So your next five rounds are going to be in the back loops only. These are your back loops. Those guys. So you're going to do one half double crochet in the back loops only. Start with this chain one space or chain two space. And in the back loops only you're going to put one single crochet. And you're going to do this for five rows in the back loops. And I'll tell you why. Because you need these front loops, these front loops here. Let me turn my light down a bit so it's easier to see. Is that easier? So these front loops, that's what we need to get into to make these. So that's what we're going to do is back loops only for five rows.
So this is my five rows in the back loops only. So I got all these lines and that's what we're going to be getting into next. So um, just join, slip stitch, fasten off is what I want you to do. You just need a weaving tail. So you can weave your end in. Preferably to the inside. So, that's what it should look like at this point. We need to So this should just stay up kind of like all the time. That's how it was designed is just to stay up, but you, you might have to. I mean, once the jingle bells on it, it'll pull it down the weight of it. So it'll stay up all the time. So I want you to put your foot like this. So looking toward the heel, because we're going to reconnect upside down on this. So get your green. That's the color we're going to use. Make a slip knot. So go down and find your first row of front loops and reconnect. So I'm going to reconnect just using a slip stitch because I'm going to put a stitch in that anyway. I want you to do one half double crochet. So in that same space that I just the same front loop, I'm going to go back into that front loop and I'm going to make a half double crochet. So once you reattach, put your half double crochet into that same space. You're going to skip one and in the next stitch you're going to put a fan stitch which is five half double crochets. So it's just like a fan stitch but smaller. So that's my five. So that's what it's going to look like. You're going to skip one and in the next one you're going to put a fan stitch. You're going to skip one and in the next stitch you're going to put a fan stitch. So that's what you're going to do all the way around. Fan stitch, skip one, fan stitch, skip one. So once you come around and you have one stitch left, I want you to put four half double crochets into that front loop. And then I want you to slip stitch to this, this half double that we put in here before and fasten off. So it would really be all depending on your counts. Um, if you were able to make it even like that. If not, it's no big deal. So we're going to hide our ends and then you're going to do your next row if, if you want. I mean, it's completely up to you. In um, red. So 
you've got all these front loops. We did five rows of them. I didn't go all the way up because you want something to grab onto. So you're going to do the same thing with the red and then the same thing with the next green if that's what you want to do. Or you can do them all green. So go ahead and do the same thing for the next two rows and I will see you on the other side. I'm on my very last row. I'm just going to slip stitch and fasten off my last row of colors, of the frills, I should say. So oh, there we have it. Our fills are all done. So now it's just a matter of sewing the jingle bell onto the end. So I take a piece of red yarn. You can sew it on any way you want. You don't have to sew it on the way I do. So I literally went up the little hole this one I went into a different hole and across now I didn't come up the same hole but I came up as close as I can so you're going to want to pull that as tightly as you can. I tied a double knot and then I weaved. And there we have it. So the jingle bell does pull it down a bit. And that is your shoe, or your slipper. Put my foot in here. It always looks better when there's a foot on it. So, thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.